Uriah, too. Dana, now, we, Dana said that, uh, now maybe he didn't know everything at the time, but he said the guys at the uh, UFCPI said that, uh, the Performance Institute said that you don't take it serious. This is Dana's quote. <laughs> this, But this is Dana's quote about you. He doesn't take his training serious. He doesn't do what anybody tells him. He does his own thing. <laughs> A week before the fight, he went to L.A. Oh, and in L.A., yeah. Hanging out yeah, in L.A. Yeah. with clubs and stuff. So not good. So I just wanted that. That was Dana's quote. Now, has he been? Have you talked to him since then? No, I haven't talked to him. Listen, first thing first. Dana is a businessman, and you know that's that's how he's looking at it. He's looking at it as a business. He's looking at it like I lost money. He's probably was hoping for me to retire, homeboy, for real. I mean, I lost money too. I trained nine weeks for this. I've invested a lot, and I didn't even get paid for that. So I lost money too, but. You know, prior to that, people were saying maybe you should have said something maybe months ahead to back out of the fight because you were. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Right. When I fight with a break it with a broken toe, or if I'm fighting and I'm hurt in a fight, my mindset and my job is to push through that. So if I'm sick and I'm not 100 percent, yeah, I know it sucks, but in my mind as a you know warrior, I'm gonna be like, all right, how can I work around this? That's what you're supposed to fucking do. That's my job. The pros show up. Unfortunately, my mind was there, but my body was like, no. So with his comment, you know, I'm sure someone related the, the message wrong to him. I don't know. And maybe he's passionate about it. That's just his reaction. I did, however, when I heard about this, I fucking got in my car. I flew to headquarters. I was ready to throw punches. I was like, which one of you motherfuckers is talking shit? Right. Yeah, right at the UFC Performance Institute. They got to back you up. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Who are these guys that are saying you're not uh, not training right? Well, I think, you know, at the end of the day, for, for them, maybe they got to throw somebody on the bus, you know? <laughs> and unfortunately, it was me. I mean, the, the message was relayed unprofessionally, I think, and it just got back to Dana in a weird way where it's like he's not taking, taking it seriously. From that standpoint, I think the nutrition, I wasn't... Uh, 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 doing the nutrition uh, with the PI. I mean, I've been cutting weight all my fucking life. Like, I'm not going to change anything. But the nutrition was different. It was more of just having a lot of calories. And, and I'm like, I don't feel comfortable with that, just eating a lot. Like, are you kidding me? I'm trying to lose weight. And it was just different. I didn't, I didn't want to do it because I didn't feel comfortable. And a, a bunch of other fighters, which I later learned, were complaining about this, but they did try it. And one of the things I discussed with uh, one of the guys from the UFC is say, you know what, I am going to try. I didn't really try it because even though I tried a little bit, I felt weird with it. As far as partying in L.A., what, I, I, I go to L.A. like maybe every other week because I love L.A. the beach. You know, that's one of the reasons I moved from New York. And if you live in New York, New York is fucking crazy. Yeah. So I moved to California because I love the beach. It's, it's, it's like a slower pace. So... With all the bullshit that was happening, with me losing my coach, with me losing my best friend, with me on the verge of depression almost, which me wanted to back out of the fight, which got me sick, I said, let me go to fucking L.A., go to the beach, clear my fucking head. In the midst of that, my buddy's like, hey, man, you want to come hang out with us? I'm like, yeah, sure. Now, if I'm getting ready for a fight and I go out, I'm never fucking drinking. It's a bad idea to drink when you're competing. It hinders horrible performance. So it was like a funny party, and I just recorded it. So I think what the PI did, they saw that, and they took it from the social media that I'm partying and I'm not following procedure, and they put all that together to throw me under the bus. And I'm like, you know what? That's fucked up. That, that's really fucked up. And I said that next time some shit like that happened, come to the source. I'm the fucking source. I'm the guy that this should happen to. No one came to me. People making their speculation. Even people online are saying you punked out and all that. And I'm like, man, if only these dumb motherfuckers had a clue that I almost died just to fucking fight. And I would never do that shit again. Now you no, I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah, but what what is now I feel for you, man. I really do. And uh with everything, especially your coach and um, with this, what is the worst part? Is it that you didn't get the fight? Is it that you feel people are, that you're not taking it seriously? What you know, and then we'll get away from negative shit. But what is the worst part of this? Well, I have one more negative question. Oh, yeah, okay. No, we won't get away from the negative shit yet, Jimmy. <laughs> Go ahead. Uriah, what is the worst part, man? One of the worst part was uh, 
the, the perception of me not taking it seriously. And yeah. if you ask any of my training partners, my problem is I take training too seriously. You know, I'm at the PI almost every day, and I even said before that I didn't feel as motivated to train. And once the PI got there, it was 10 minutes from my house, I was so remotivated, and I was there every day, and it hurt the fact that people were saying that. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm dedicating myself to this, and this is what you see? Also, I didn't get to fight because I really wanted to fight, man. I mean, I train nine fucking weeks. Normally, a camp is what? Six to five? Nine weeks I prepared for this. So I was ready. I was ready to go. But my body was like, "Uh uh-uh. So I have to take the positive out of it and say, you know what? There are some health issues that I had prior that I ignored, and I let my pride get in the way, and I shouldn't do that. At the end of the day, my life is important. And, again, I I said, fuck everything. Let me just fight. Let me just fight. Forgetting that. This is my livelihood, and i got to take care of myself. So that's what I've learned. And, and Uriah, obviously when somebody close to us you know, passes away, especially when it's from, uh, I guess, a suicide, it's, it's frustrating because then there's always the questions you start asking yourself. Like, did I miss something, or sh- should I have noticed something? And you know what's funny, too, man? Well, it's not funny, but what really sucks is that the day before it happened, before Robert took his life, I saw Robert. I think it was like a, a Tuesday. I saw Robert. And Robert is the first person to always say hi. He's always the first to say what's up. And I remember the look on his face. And it was such a sad look. And I couldn't really put two and two together until after the event. But I remember the way he looked at me. And he was walking to the bathroom as I was coming out the bathroom. He didn't say anything to me. But he gave me that look. And I cannot get that fucking look out of my head. And it fucking haunted me a little bit, you know. And Robert was like a sensei to the gym. You know, he did a lot for the, for the, for the sport, you know. When, when I first got there, he's one of the guys, besides Eric, uh, next day, he was one of the guys that kind of, uh, you know, embraced me a little bit and, and told me the stuff I need to work on to improve myself. So it sucked. And in the midst of that, I had other stuff happening with, with a best friend that I've known for years. So it really sucked. And then I'm like, what the fuck do I do? And then for all that shit to happen, it was like, are you fucking kidding me? But you know what? My little brother always tell me, keep it pushing. You just got to keep it pushing. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. But it, it, it sucks, and then we always... Although, if it's any consolation, there's nothing you can say in those moments. You didn't miss anything that you should have caught. You know you know what I mean? There, there's no signal that if, if you would have caught it, you would have stopped it. People who are committed to doing something like that, there's no one thing that a guy walking by on the way to the bathroom could have said. So, you know, I, I'm, that's not going to help, but... <laughs> but I'm better, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot better, you know. Uh, my, my support system has been fabulous. My coaches... My family, my friends, the, the important people. You know what I'm talking about. And, you know, I, I love them, man. Lisa, Lisa Hires is my, uh, my business manager who's with me the entire time. You know, I wasn't aware of everybody, but I kept calling for her. She, she was there. She held my hand. My whole body kept cramping up, and I just felt like, man, I'm going to die. And, you know, I, I'm so happy she was there. Of course, my coaches, Eric and Melvin and uh, Clayton, everybody was there with support. But I feel really good right now. I'm going to England in a couple of days, get away a little bit. Definitely want to fight this guy, give him a proper retirement fight, but we see what he wants to do. Well, and also, you know, Dana had mentioned you possibly fighting at 205. And then Dana said, uh, yeah, you know. Fuck out of here, man. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. First of all, those 205ers, take down a Daniel Cormier for, for a second. Uh, that motherfucker's huge. He's cutting from like, what, what, 250 or some shit? And it's a different type of body set. You know, for 185er, they're strong, but I know the type of stress. For a 205er, hell no. They're, they're way too big. I've never had an issue cutting weight. I'm not looking to go up any fucking weight. It's just an issue I had with my body that needs to be resolved. That's the problem. It's not about changing weight class. Get the fuck out of here. Now, now you're right. I'm asking honestly, man. I don't know if... The, did you ever have a... Did you ever not make weight before? No. I've All right. Then always made weight. The, the, then Dana's got to calm down, man. Actually, that's Jimmy saying that. That wasn't me. I think Dana should be more hyper. I'm, I'm Team Dana. <laughs> I got three kids. I'm only kidding about yeah, that. Yeah, when Uriah Hall signs Dana check, I'm Team Uriah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. But, uh, well, listen, man. That's, listen, I, you know, I think Dana's got a lot of stress on him, to be honest with you. I'm not sticking up with my buddy because I'm buddies with both guys. I hate, Let me tell you something, Uriah. I, I really, and on a personal note, I, and this is not a big thing with you and Dana, but like even the thing with Dana with Stipe that we didn't talk about, what we were going to talk about over the weekend with the belt thing. Sure, sure. I hate when, even my guy Ally Quinta had a thing with Dana. I hate when 
when guys fight with the, I mean, it happens, it's business, but as in myself, like I'm friends with all these guys, like yourself too. And I love Dana too, because I'm personally friends with him. So it's like, I know it's business. It just bums me out. Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing is this, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. White is known for, he speaks his mind. He, he, Fucking Jimmy. He's very, um, he's very, uh, he's very quick to speak his mind. A lot yeah. of times he probably, I, I'm, I'm just, he's, he's, he blurts things out very, very yeah. bluntly and honestly and says what he wants to say. And I'm sure a lot of times he'll look back and go, oh, okay. But, you know, he just speaks his mind very honestly. And um, so, All right, so you're not going to go to 205. And, and, you know, you're right. When, when it looked like when Anderson Silva stepped in and fought Cormier because Jones couldn't fight him, um, you know, you could see the strength difference uh, in Cormier over Silva. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. That is way too big. But I would, yeah, I would say you're like if Uriah had problems like Hendricks had, or if uh, what's his name, the go we love, oh Kelvin, if uh, Kelvin problems, Gaslam, if sure. This is like the second or third time I'd say, yeah, you know, Uriah, sure. maybe we should talk. Yeah, but man, dude, I don't know personally, and I'm, and I'm, uh, I think you deserve a pass to be because, honest with you. And it's, and it's not because I, I actually had trouble; it's because I had an issue. It's not because I ate yeah. too much or a party. I actually had a fucking issue. But here's the thing. I don't have anything bad to say about Dana. Nor do we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, not because he's my boss. Yeah. It's because he's Dana. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. If I have allowed people to keep bashing me, I wouldn't be where I am today. And just, I love what I do. And in life, you, you're going to have people that say stuff like that. You're going to have people that have their negative affirmation. I'm not about all that, bro. Mm. I got my whole life to live. And you know what? Humble was passionate about it. He was passionate. You know, he was looking at the fact that he lost money and all that stuff. That's fine. That's his own doing. I got nothing bad to say about Dana. Me and Dana actually have a good relationship. I've never really had an argument with Dana or anything. So I got nothing bad to say. You know, he's, he's doing his thing, and I'm cool, man. I'm kicking it. So let me ask you, um, what, do you, what do you think is next? Vitor has been pushing to fight with Bisping. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. What do you think is next for you, and, and like, where, where, where are you Lord. looking to? Vitor's looking for an easy fight, right? He saw that shit coming. He, was, he said that the the fact that he didn't fight was equivalent to the loss of his sister. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. Like, I have so much respect for you until you Wait. open your mouth and said that. Did Wait, what? Fuck? He said that? Oh. What did he say? He said that. I'm like, dude, it's a fucking fight. Are you serious? You can't compare that at all to the fact that you lost your sister. And my condolences, of course, but get the fuck out of here with that, man. Wait, he was saying Seriously? that... You should have fought. He, he, what did he say? He fought when he lost his sister. No, no, wait. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. You know, don't mess it up, Jimmy. I'm saying <laughs> that he said that the fact that he didn't fight is equivalent to the loss of his sister. I'm like, what? Oh, oh my God, uh, Chris, yeah. look up that quote quick. Chris is looking that thing up because that's that's brutal. If so, I don't think that. How could? <laughs> yeah, that, that's not even. That's just wacky. I don't. Is, are you sure you read that right, buddy? Because oh, I. Yeah. You're right. He's like, that's what I heard. That's fucked up. That's what I heard. That's yeah. what I heard. That's like, what? Because I want listen, man. I hope you guys still fight, man. Because yeah. I, still, I, I was I bummed out legend. as much as anybody. He's a legend. Yeah. He's a legend. He's a lot for the sport. I'm telling you, I was so excited to do that. I mean, yeah. I bust my ass in my training camp. I was ready to go. Oh, Styles and, make know, fights. I know, and... I know it sucks. How many fights have I had where people pulled out the day of, the week of? But I kept the pushing, man, because that's what should happen. Yeah, well, 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 maybe the fight will still happen, though. Have you have you spoke to anybody about what's next, or it's too too soon? I hear he's get you know he's he's probably looking for leverage now. Maybe asking for more money. This is stuff I'm hearing. You know, yeah. uh, maybe asking for money. Maybe want to fight this thing, but at super retirement fights, I think both of them are. I still want to fight him. There's a lot of guys that I want to fight too. There's a couple of up and comers I definitely want to fight because they've been running their mouth. But I definitely want to fight him first. So you want to uh, veto first. Fight. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Well, we're looking for the quote. His sister was murdered. So, I, I mean, that was a, a very, very tragic ending. Um, yeah. I think 2004 oh, it happened. No. Um, it, it, well, we're looking for that quote. Someone relayed that message to me. I didn't read it personally, but someone relayed that message. And I'm like, what? Get the fuck out of here. Why would someone say that? Oh, maybe he said it privately. Did he, did he say it? No, someone overheard him say it? Or did he say it to someone and they just... Uh, 
I don't know. I'm I'm being like a troll right now. You know when like a troll online just hears shit and yeah. Just jump to well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen. We don't well, know. Chris, we can't find the Chris quote. the producer is not exactly a detective. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, What could he all. do? He could just Google <laughs> shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I hadn't seen any of that. Like, I'd seen he put a, a message on Instagram being like, you know, I hope your ride gets better. And, like, he's pissed, obviously, that he didn't get to fight. But it wasn't. I, I didn't see anything about his sister. All right, Chris the producer. Don't be calling him a liar. It's not listen. He thought he heard <sighs> it. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, Uriah, we're, we're happy that you're, you're doing well. That was very, very scary, and I'm sorry you didn't get to fight. But, um, you know, obviously uh, we want to see you fight again soon. You've just had a camp, and you're um, in shape. So you, they could probably get you on Brooklyn if you, if you push. Yeah, well, right now I'm actually heading into training at the PI, and, you know, I'm, 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 we're, we're good now. You know, I spoke to the guys. There's a lot of miscommunication. I love the PI, man. It's probably one of the best that ever happened to me. But I'm on my way there to train with Bo. He's probably one of the best trainers I ever worked with. I have a lot, a lot of trainers too, but I'm good, man. I'm back on track. Despite all, right. all the negative affirmation, all the bullshit. Ain't nobody got time for that, bro. So, yeah, stay, stay, stay positive, buddy. And we can't wait to see you again, man. Yeah, we'll definitely see you again. I'm hoping to go to the PI and uh, do a little elliptical. I want to get out there and do me some elliptical. You'll see me and Jimmy on the ellipticals upstairs. Yeah, two fucking hens. <laughs> <laughs> 